The U.S. and the Philippines are accelerating a security deal which will give Washington access to four more military bases in the Southeast Asian nation. For more, let's speak with Ritzwan Ramat, principal defense analyst from open source intelligence firm James. Uh, Ritzwan, why is the Philippines such a significant strategic ally for the U.S.? Why is Washington so eager to expand its access to the bases there? Yes. So if I will refresh uh, our memory to answer this question uh, of what took place uh, in August 2022 uh, after the former U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi made a visit to Taiwan. Uh, as we recall, j just days after the visit, China began an unprecedented series of military exercises which are essentially a dress rehearsal uh, to what would happen during an invasion of Taiwan. And during these exercises, it was very revealing and very, very clear to observers that in the event that it invades Taiwan, China would seek to control the Luzon Strait, which is the waterway just north uh, to the Philippines. Yeah, this, is a, this is a very crucial waterway, and I think Washington understands that this cannot be allowed to happen. So I think that's, the, uh, that's uh, what is the, the uh, clear reason. Uh, it's very important for Washington to maintain control over this, uh, this uh, crucial waterway, especially uh, to ensure that this U.S. forces, uh, those that are based out of Guam, will have un unimpeded access to Taiwan in the event of a war in China. So I think this is the real reason behind Austin's visit to the Philippines, to secure more base bases for the U.S. forces such that they can deny China the ability to exert their forces over the Luzon Strait. And in addition to that, uh, add on additional supply nodes for the U.S. military forces to operate from during an invasion of Taiwan by China. And Ritzwan, Washington at this point in time, finding a friendlier ally in the current Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. versus Rodrigo Duterte, who was a bit more pro-Beijing. So do you expect movement on ECTA, the security deal, to be a lot quicker as a result? Mm -hmm. you know, actually, the U.S. and the Philippines, as we know, they have uh, for decades maintained very, very close defense relations. Um, you know, this, is, this took place even before the Philippines uh, gained their independence. Uh, but I think, as you correctly pointed out, things uh, hit a snag in 2016. Uh, as we know, in 2016, President Duterte uh, effected a major shift uh, in the Philippine foreign policy by distancing the country away from the U.S. and then gravitating towards China. We've seen talk about how they will be uh, you know, acquiring military items from China uh, and contracts like that, which did not happen previously. But now, I think with the appointment of President Marcos, uh, there is an opportunity to reset the Philippines' foreign policy. So I do not see this as a shift. Uh, I see this more as a reset to how it has been for decades before uh, President Duterte took power. Uh, Rezwan, earlier you mentioned the implications of the geographical footprint that ECDA will grant Washington. And all mm -hmm. of this, of course, is not going to sit well with Beijing. So how do you expect Marcos Jr. to then balance this relationship with Washington without angering China too much? Yeah, it's, it's a very complicated uh, equation for his administration. Uh, as you will imagine, you know, the Chinese are not going to be very happy about it. Uh, as it stands today, even before this new agreement was signed, uh, the military planners in China already see themselves as being strategically encircled by U.S. military forces. From the Misawa Air Base uh, in Japan, the Yokosuka Naval Base in Japan, the Kunsan Air Base in South Korea, and then you have Guam. So, and now with this additional military bases in the Philippines, I think the Chinese are going to see this as a tightening of the American uh, military news, uh, if I may, around Beijing. And I imagine that there will be certain policy shifts uh, in Beijing's planning doctrines in the months to come. And I suspect that Beijing will make uh, some stern representations with uh, the Philippines, you know, uh, in the wake of this particular agreement. It's going to be very complicated. Uh, China still remains a, a, a major economic partner of uh, Manila. And I think uh, this is the calculation that Manila will have to take uh, from now onwards, how to balance the military relations with the U.S. with its economic, uh, you know, friendship with China. Uh, Rizwan, one last question. Uh, the Marcos administration, of course, very mm -hmm. welcoming of Washington, but domestically, uh, how is the U.S. military presence seen? 
Well, the U.S. military presence in the Philippines can be dated back to around 1898, you know, when the U.S. forces seized the Philippine Islands from the Spanish. Uh, and I think there are no Filipinos alive today who have not grown up uh, with the idea of being under Washington's uh, security umbrella. But as I mentioned just now, since the time of President Duterte and his friendly ties with China, we've seen signs that there is a, a shift in public perception uh, especially with regards to how they view the U.S. military presence in China, whether or not the ties with Beijing, the friendly tie, uh, friendlier ties with Beijing will have benefits. But I think despite this small shift, uh, we're still very, um, uh, very isolated. I think largely people in the Philippines still very much support the U.S. military presence in the region, especially of, um, you know, in the wake of what took place in the South China Sea in the last few years. Uh, and I think the public perception is still that the U.S., would defend the Philippines should they get into a conflict with China. Oh, Ritzwan, thank you very much for your insights. That was Ritzwan Ramat, Principal Defence Analyst from open source intelligence firm Jane's.